I'm so excited. All right. So this is my capstone uh, presentation, and it's divided into two parts because at the beginning of the year, I had one project that I was working on, but then I scrapped it and moved on to something more exciting or that I was more passionate about. And so my first uh, capstone project was designed to make me uncomfortable. It was designed to push my boundaries and uh, find where my limits were. And so I had forms that I could or that I sent out, and I had people. What they could do is they could challenge me to do anything in a certain time frame, and it was one day, three days, or a week. Uh, and so I had to com try and complete those challenges, and it was limitless. Anybody could challenge me to anything, and there were some really crazy ones that I just didn't want to do because it was just so far out there. But then there were some ones I was like, yeah, I could really do this. And so one of my, the first ones that I did, uh, it was like an emotional challenge. It was like two parts. There's one where I had to create seven letters, and it was open win. And so I would give them to somebody, and the title on the envelope would say open win, and it be an event like uh, open when we leave for college or something like that. And so that was designed to like, make me more open because uh, I am a very stonewall uh, a lot. And then there's one where I had to be like, completely honest for a full day and I just didn't show up that day. Um, <laughs> so those were the two ones that like I think worked really well and uh, really pushed me. And then there were some miscellaneous ones like I had a pump pass kick competition and there was one where I had to be like a vegetarian for a week. And uh, needless to say, I did not uh, complete that one. Um, but then, all right, so we're on to my next part. So are there any questions about the first challenge? Why was vegetarian difficult? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what was the weirdest challenge that either you did or just didn't want to do at all? Uh, the weirdest challenge I got was from you. <laughs> it, because it was obvious. <laughs> it was, I had to draw a god and pray to him like once a day and then throw the piece of paper away. No, you had to recycle it. You don't throw that away. What chat, what of these uh, challenges did you learn the most from? Um, I would say these two, the ones that, uh, and like there were other challenges that I completed. But these were the ones that like stuck out the most and like had the most impact. And so these, uh, it really like caused me to like, really think about like how I was feeling. I hate doing that. So uh, it was a, a different a realm, different realm. Any other questions before I move on to my next project? All right. So my next project was um, designed to automate a home. So there is uh, something that I use called Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Pi, and there's a video explaining that in the next slide. But uh, the goal was to connect the Raspberry Pi to something in the house to make it so you can control from the smart, uh, smartphone and basically create a, a smart grid for the home. And so right here we have a video explaining what a Raspberry Pi is. And uh, in this video it explains a, an earlier model of Raspberry Pi, but I will go more into depth about what I use. So like this, this whole time I haven't had This is a Raspberry Pi. It's a credit card size computer that costs around 25 pounds, designed to teach young people to program, and is capable of doing all kinds of wonderful things. Back in the 80s, kids had to learn how to code computers to use them, but as a result, these kids grew up with an inbuilt understanding of how computers work. Now, we need more programmers than ever before. So to deal with this problem, some clever people came up with a brush from back to reignite the spark. It runs Linux, a free operating system from an SD card, just like the one in your digital camera, and it's powered by a USB phone charger. You just plug in a mouse and a keyboard, connect it to a TV or monitor, and you're ready to go. In school, not only is Raspberry Pi a great way to learn programming skills as part of ICT, there are also dozens of cross-curricular applications, like science, <laughs> and music. And all over the world, people are experimenting with Raspberry Pis and attending Raspberry Jam events, where people of all ages are learning what can be done with a Raspberry Pi. Since the first Raspberry Pi was shipped, we've seen examples of people using the Pi in a variety of amazing and interesting projects. Taking advantage of its size, portability, cost, programmability, and connectability. So whether you want to learn to make games, Build robot, or even teach about the parachute with Raspberry Pi. The sky's the limit. Okay. And 
and so that's what a Raspberry Pi is. And then I have another video that uh, explains what some uh, some projects that you can do with a, a Raspberry Pi include. And this doesn't really have sound, so I will be talking over this. But um, let me skip ahead real quick. There we go. And so my Raspberry Pi is different. As one in the video, it was much uh, larger. Mine is only this big. I know a lot of you guys can see this. But it's a lot smaller, and uh, it's Wi-Fi enabled, which the uh, earlier versions of Raspberry Pi, you had to connect through an Ethernet, so it wasn't as uh, accessible. Like, the Internet wasn't very accessible. And so this, there's a lot more you can do with it. Uh, color 1 offset, is, it sends it smaller, there's less uh, processing power, and so like whenever I, I do a demonstration over here of uh, this monitor, it will be slower and it'll be a little bit more clunky. But it still works really well. And then, uh, so this is showing just some things, like some people use them as a media streamer, so like you can watch movies off them, you can create like your own little movie theater with them. Um, and you can hide it a lot easier because you don't have a full computer, and instead you just have this the little Raspberry Pi that you're, you're streaming off of. And uh, so this is just showing some, some programming things because uh, the main thing with the Raspberry Pi is everything you do has to be programmed. And so that's either stripping it off of other websites, other developers, or, or creating your own. And uh, so as this goes on, there's just different things. Uh, later on, I have some resources that uh, there's a website that shows a bunch of different projects you can do with home automation, with Raspberry Pi, with other microcontrollers. Uh, so as this uh, should be finishing up. Um, and so something that you can do that uh, is another part of my project, if I, if I can get to it, is uh, a camera. You can get a live camera feed uh, from a Raspberry Pi and stream to like another monitor. So instead of only working with like thermostats, which was my goal, was to uh, connect like Raspberry Pi to thermostats to control from the phone, uh, you'd be able to do like security and a lot of a lot of like smart smart grid type things where you can see like your entire uh, home from your smartphone. So this is a uh, that was a robot that uh, people made, and uh, there's a lot of electrical things. That you have to do. I don't have a lot of my stuff with me today, but there's a lot of circuit boarding that you have to do with Raspberry Pis if you wanted to do like very specific things. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to this video. Uh, and... All right. So the end goal was to connect the Raspberry Pi to a thermostat, like I said. And uh, in order to do this, uh, I just needed to be able to send data from my phone to the Raspberry Pi and have a, a digital signal sent from the Raspberry Pi to display the value, and like a thermostat would change that, the, the temperature. Um, and so there are different ways that I can do this. Uh, hopefully I can get this to work real quick. But there's something that I, I downloaded. It's called a VNC Team Viewer, if I can find it. And uh, it's basically like a Team Viewer, if you've ever used that, uh, you can control, uh, like, you can remotely control a a monitor from your phone. Is there a way you could like center the monitor? Yeah, I just we can't see it on the side. Um, looks like I gotta try and hook this up real quick. Uh, so what I'm doing is I need to get the IP from my Raspberry Pi and hook it into my, uh, my phone. I don't know if I'll be able to do that uh, very quickly, uh, but if that doesn't work, I have hopefully a another demonstration that will work um, because I have a something called a, a packet sniffer uh, on my on the Raspberry Pi and I know a lot of you guys don't know what that means but basically it's a network security thing where I can monitor the traffic that, uh, from the internet so say you connect to my hotspot on my phone and I have this running uh, if you go to a website I can get the IP or like the address of where you're going and I can see what you're doing and make sure that uh, that to spy on you or make sure that uh, you're just staying like responsible. Um, so hopefully I can get this to work. I, I may not be able to. I haven't used this before, but um, uh, anyway, what this would do if uh, I can get it to work real quick, it would uh, allow me to control the Raspberry Pi from my smartphone, and so uh, that would be able that make that would allow me to be able to 
uh, input data from my phone to change the, the temperature on the thermostat or watch the uh, security cameras. And so something else that uh, I, I downloaded just to show like the, the robustness of this was the, the packet sniffer. And uh, I tried getting it to work yesterday, but it wouldn't, I couldn't get it to uh, run correctly. Um, so I need to uh, Could you please elaborate uh, to those who are not as um, technologically savvy as yourself what a packet sniffer is? Yeah, it is. Uh, it just gets the information, like say you're on my hotspot with your phone. And you look at the website. Okay, I, so that's the package. Yes, okay. that's the package. I see. Um, so right now, is the mouse and keyboard connected to the Raspberry Pi? Yes. So um, I have this USB hub, which allows me to get like four more USB ports, because since it's so small, there's not a lot that can fit on it. And so a lot, like I can only either fit one mouse or one keyboard. With the USB port, I'm able to fit it both and, uh, and control like an actual computer. Um, and so if I can get this to run, maybe, because um, a lot of this stuff I just got like last week, and so I'm still trying to learn how it works and uh, get everything to run smoothly. But, uh, okay, so it won't really run, but uh, you can, there's a, a lot of code that you can see. Um, okay. So this is a, uh, over here, if, uh, I know all of you can't see, but over here is where the program would be running in this window, and that's like if someone's on my the hotspot or over the internet, I'd be able to check and see what they were doing. Um, and over here is the actual code for the, the packet sniffer, and uh, this is actually pretty condensed as uh, compared to like the original code that uh, I, I, was, I went through a video and made with the, the content creator. But, um, what this does is it teaches me how to use Raspberry Pi so that I can integrate it better into the smart home. And then and these were some of the resources that I, I used. Their, uh, Raspberry Pi has its own uh, website, obviously, and they have a ton of resources they can use just to learn different things, like mapping the, web, uh, mapping the weather, um, there's hardware, software, uh, there's a bunch of different uh, software that it allows you to use to create your own programs and software. And then over here, this website, it is uh, devoted to um, innovators, like uh, hobbyists creating their own own inventions. So there's like home automation, there's uh, Raspberry Pi, there's Arduino, which is another microcontroller, basically an, another Raspberry Pi. And it there's just a ton of different things. And some, some stuff with Raspberry Pi that I thought was really cool, someone made their own makeshift Google Glasses. And they, it worked just like regular Google Glasses, but like half the price, basically, basically free. Um, so this is just something mentioned. And then there's always guides on how to do it. And so that is something that would be vital to my project is learning how to do this stuff. And then there's something called the New Boston, uh, which is a, a very good website, not just for computer science, but there's a few business, computer science, cooking, health and science, Humanities, math, science, social studies, and this website is devoted to uh, videos just teaching people about different things. And so this is uh, actually where I learned how to do the uh, create the packet sniffer. Um, so that is uh, it for the second part. Are there any questions? How much was the Raspberry Pi? Okay, so the Raspberry Pi itself was only ten dollars, but everything else that I needed for this came up to around $130. So, so the Raspberry Pi isn't very much at all. If somebody wanted to do something of their own, it wouldn't cost very much to start it with it. Uh, correct. How many times have you asked for the Raspberry Pi? Every time. <laughs> How did you transition to, so this is so different from where you started, what, what led you to decide to do this? How did you transition to this? So this new Raspberry Pi, it's called the Zero W because it's wireless, and it's uh, based off the older model, just as high as zero, which is uh, that size. And so this came out around four months ago, about the, uh, the turn of 2017. And so I saw that, and just the thought popped in my mind, like I could create something with this. So I, it was sold out for a while, and I was able to order it just before spring break. 
they came in out at last week's spring break, and so I started working with it, but I realized I didn't have everything I needed. So just recently, like I got funding from school, and I was able to do everything I needed so I can actually get started. Um, is this something that could help with the robotics team? Uh, yeah. I remember like two years ago, uh, there was a student that came in with the Raspberry Pi, and we used it to get a camera feed uh, from the robot. What are some things that you've learned through this process, not just about the technology itself, but about yourself and about working through some of the transitions and obstacles and things like that? Well, from the, uh, the first project, uh, I, I don't know, it just, it didn't really work as well as I thought it, what I thought it would, and that's why I transitioned, but it definitely did teach me some of my boundaries, uh, like emotional and physical. Uh, and just about how like I thought, and then with uh, the Raspberry Pi, uh, it just taught me like how important like money is, and how important it is education is, because a lot of the stuff I can't really learn it at school. I mean, I take a digital electronics class and like I learned how to circuit board, but still there wasn't a lot that I I knew how to do prior to this, and so I I had to find resources like these that uh, were very vital. What's the Craziest thing you've ever seen done? Um, there's not a ton, especially with this model, because this one just came out. Well, so, what's, what's the most impressive one? Um, so we can go through. Like, I haven't seen anything that's like mind blowing. Like the coolest thing that I saw was the uh, the Google Glasses. And so if, if you can see, there's like 1,200 projects, and uh, I mean, a lot of it's robots that people make because it's easily uh, programmable. So it's, uh, a lot easier to make a robot out of this than, say, if you're buying the best parts, because those are a lot more expensive. Uh, so there's a lot of easy stuff, like just controlling an LED, which is just a light, um, uh, smart mirrors, uh, smart car system. So there's a lot of really cool stuff, but I wouldn't say that there's anything that's like, wait, that dude made a Furby? <laughs> so this is an Or you control the Furby. So we gave it for the AI. So you were lying when you said they weren't impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess I would. Um, what, I mean, have you thought through kind of the ethical issues, if you think there are any, of, of this um, of this tool? And I'm thinking of the circle. I've heard the book was better than the movie because the movie was not that great if you haven't seen it. But, but it brings up the kind of this idea of transparency and we're to a point in our culture where everything's wide open, and this really opens things yeah. up. I mean, because it gives anybody who has, um, well, not anybody, somebody who has the ability and the, and the know-how, um, but it gives them access to uh, really. So a lot of stuff. my thought on it is there are no ethical issues with the Raspberry Pi itself, because in the, uh, the video about uh, why the Raspberry Pi was created, it was because there's um, computer illiteracy um, among today's youth. And so, uh, it's no different than a computer like 20 years ago, when uh, they had to program everything. Uh, but there are definitely more resources, and my thought on it uh, is like, there's already going to be people that, that use this for no good. And so, uh, I mean, you're never going to get away from that. But this can definitely teach kids how to be uh, smarter, and teach them their own network security issues, and like how to defend against viruses, especially with, like, with the, uh, the ransomware outbreak. Uh, last weekend, uh, if there were like higher computer literacy uh, percentages of that, then I think that something like this wouldn't necessarily outbreak as easily because people would know how to uh, identify like phishing links and uh, and viruses. Is this uh, so? It's something that you like have just started. Like, is it? Yes. Uh, is this something that you? It's like piqued your interest and you want to go to school and do this? Is this something that you want to keep as a hobby or what? Okay, so I'm very STEM oriented. Okay. So I was already uh, going to Rose Holman for electrical engineering. And so this was just something that uh, I was like, you know, I'm already going to be like majoring in this and this is going to be like a future career path. So like, this is really cool. I can get a head start on it and, and learn because of, uh, I'm, there's no doubt in my mind that I would be dealing stuff with this at Rose Holman. And so it's just kind of a head start. And he's only had the materials for what? Yeah. Two I got weeks? It. Yeah. I mean, I got, got some of the stuff. Everything like last Wednesday, <laughs> and then some of the stuff yesterday.
So where are you at in the process of what your goal was with the thermostat? Like how uh, close are you to? So I'm able to control the Raspberry Pi from my phone. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, that's a step closer. But mm -hmm. I haven't really worked on the circuiting of like creating like a, a, a pseudo thermostat and being able to like output values from the, the Raspberry Pi to the, the pseudo thermostat. So how is it different then? So like I know that there are thermostats now that you can control from your phone. Yeah. So what, what do you have to have in order for yours to work? How is it different than what's on the market now? Okay, so uh, I actually did some research into thermostats, which sounds really goofy. But um, there are, most thermostats are analog. And so uh, basically it's a, the thermostat is a screw uh, that like when you loosen it, the screw loosens and like more, uh, it's like sends an analog uh, value and like heats the home. And so like when you tighten it, it makes it hotter because uh, there's a lot of your stuff around it. But a, a smart thermostat relies solely off of digital um, outputs, which that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of you. But um, it relies on ones and zeros more than um, like metallic switches and stuff like that. And so a Raspberry Pi, like for a, a smart thermostat, Raspberry Pi um, would coordinate with it a lot easier because both of them off, are off of digital. But for an analog, um, like the ones that you probably have in your home, it, I don't really know how I get it to work. So that's really what I, I need to work for. Any other questions?